let's talk pressure and the different types of pressure that may come up in the exam. We've got absolute and ambient, we've got gauge, we've got barometric. Well, the first thing you always want to do when you're doing the written theory exam is draw up a pressure chart on your blank bit of paper. It's a very easy chart to just draw up and refer to. So we've got a depth. I'm going to talk about meters because that's always easier in physics than feet. So we'll draw up the surface, zero meters, and then we're going to have 10, 20, 30, and 40 meters. The next column is going to be absolute and ambient pressure. Technically, there's a difference between the two, but as far as we're concerned, it doesn't matter. So this is a salt water chart. So at the surface, the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. At 10 meters, it's two, 23, 34, and 45. The next column will be gauge pressure. Let's look at this barometric pressure quickly. Barometric pressure is to do with the weather. There won't be questions about it. Barometric pressure could be an answer. If you see it as an answer, it is not the right answer. Now let's look at gauge pressure. Well, the gauge we're talking about is our depth gauge, which we want to read zero at the surface. So we subtract one from absolute or ambient to find our gauge pressure. At the surface, our gauge should read zero atmospheres. At 10 meters, one atmosphere. At 20 meters, two atmospheres. At 30 meters, three atmospheres. And at 40 meters, four atmospheres. And that is, of course, salt water. What is it going to be in fresh water? To get fresh water, we divide by 1.03. So it's going to be zero atmospheres at the surface, 0 0.97 at 10 meters, and so on and so forth. So finding the absolute or ambient pressure in fresh water, well, to find the gauge pressure, we subtracted one from the absolute or ambient. So if we want to go from great gauge to absolute or ambient pressure, all we need to do is add one to our gauge pressure. So now we have our fresh water gauge pressures in our chart. We can add in our absolute or ambient fresh water pressures just by adding one. So at the surface, it would be one at 10 meters, 1.97, 20 meters, 2.94 and so on. Let's take a close look at these freshwater numbers. It doesn't matter whether we're looking at the absolute ambient or the gauge freshwater numbers. What we can identify about them is that they are all just a little bit less than the saltwater numbers, but they are not at all round. So when you are having to use a pressure to calculate something from the physics exam, my advice to you is to always work using the nice round saltwater numbers and ignore the freshwater numbers as your starting point. So now we're back to a really simple, clean, easy to recreate chart. Let's use it to answer a question. What is the gauge pressure at 20 meters, 66 feet fresh water? So we are at 20 meters and it's asking for the gauge pressure. So salt water, the answer is two atmospheres. Now the key thing is the physics exam is multiple choice. So we know that two atmospheres is the salt water answer. It's asking fresh water. We just need to look for the answer that is a little bit less, 1.94. Let's use a, another question to apply the, do the question as though it's in salt water and then pick the answer that's a little bit less approach. So this time we have a question saying, how much denser is the air a diver breathes at 30 meters fresh water compared to the surface? Well, 30 meters is four atmospheres in salt water. So four times would be the answer for salt water, but the question is fresh water. So we need to find the answer that's a little bit less. It's 3.91. Let's do one more example question to prove my pick the answer that's a little bit less if it's in fresh water works. How much air must be pumped from the surface to fill a container with a volume of 20 litres? The container lies at a depth of 40 metres fresh water. So 40 metres is five atmospheres, salt water. Uh, so I'll write down my five. As I pump air down from the surface, it gets denser, it gets smaller, so I'm going to have to pump more than 20 litres of air. So I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply by 20. That's the number in the question. And that is going to give me 100. So 100 would be the answer if it was in salt water, but it's not. It's in fresh water. So now I've got to pick the answer that is a little bit less. Look at my answers, A, B, C, and D. A is way less. C is a lot less or quite a lot less. D is the one that's a little bit less. 
D is the correct answer, 98 litres. For questions in fresh water, this will work 90% of the time. Let's look at an example question where it will not work. If it takes a diver 120 minutes to breathe through a tank of air at the surface, how long will the same tank last at a depth of 20 metres fresh? Okay, so it is a question about the amount of time it will take to breathe through a tank. It will take less time to breathe through a tank at depth than it would at the surface. So I am looking for an answer that is less than 120 minutes. That is a key thing to think as you read a question like this. So I'll take my 120 minutes and what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take the pressure. Uh, salt water pressure at 20 meters, which is three atmospheres. And I'm going to divide because I want a number that is less. I get 40. So I get 40 minutes, but the question is fresh water. 40 minutes, I got the answer using the salt water. So I divided by three. So instead of picking the answer that's a little bit less, I'm going to pick the answer that's a little bit more because I divided. 41 minutes is the answer. So when we have pressure related calculations to do, it is easy to create and use the salt water pressure table to the left. Ignore the type of water given to you in the question. Just use the salt water pressure table. And then just remember the rule that once you have calculated an answer, if the question is fresh water, pick the answer that is a little bit less than the answer you calculated. Nine times out of ten, this will work. If you had to divide, pick the answer that is a little bit more. The most important thing to remember, though, is in the physics exam, if you had to use your calculator, always ask yourself, have I chosen the correct answer given the type of water in the question?